If I could pick my top three video game related guests, people that I think would be great to have on and really have a good, interesting conversation with them, I would pick uh, Bobby Kotick, uh, Phil Spencer. Um, I would pick Corey Barlog, assuming that he was at a point in his career where he was comfortable talking openly and honestly, because I, what I would want to talk to him about is less about God of war. Um, although, you know, if we had him on, people could call in. Um, I'd want to talk less about God of war and more about just cause just his experience with notoriety and quote video game fame. There's not a lot of us. I mean, you know, Corey has it because his game was bigger. Um, not his dick. Uh, bigger than I ever did. But I had that, you know, window back in like 2000 or 95 to 2005 or six or whatever, where I was a, one of the most well-known figures in that business in, in that part of the business. And I want to, I I'm interested in talking to other people that have kind of gone through that. Like, how is he doing with it? Is he, is, is does he have a healthy relationship with it? Like Corey, Corey right now is at a point in his career, uh, amongst video game people, almost like the rock where whatever the rock tweets, people are going to be, uh, uh, saying it's great. Cordy could say, why the chicken cross the road and then tweet to get to the other side. And it would get like 40,000 likes. Right. Um, and that's not an insult. That's just like, so it, it forces you to go, how do I, know who to really believe at this point and, and how has my relationship with myself changed? You know, um, I, I would want to talk more about that with Corey than like, um, what did you, why'd you get rid of the jump button? Right. Um, and so honestly, PR would probably be like, Oh, that's fine, but they won't run the risk. I don't think, uh, Sephora, thank you for the super chat, buddy he says, what would you say to Bobby Kotick if he came onto the TV show? Um, TV, this show, um, well, I'd ask him a couple of things. I'd say, I'd ask him the things that the other people won't ask him. I'd say you are in Jeffrey Epstein's little black book. Now, a lot of people are in Jeffrey Epstein's little black book that had nothing to do with going to the island, flying on the plane, molesting children. He, he, he was a guy who collected contacts. So, I mean, he literally, he may have been in Epstein's black book because Epstein had a client or a, a mark or whatever it was, uh, who, loves call of duty or loves world of warcraft and is like dude I mean, he met kodak at a party and said can i call out reach out to you and get free call of duties um so or he could have been a fucking island hopping child molester so i would absolutely ask him about that i would ask him about um situations where i think he's done things where like even michael packer said is he greedy yeah he's a greedy guy um, I would say, where's the line for you, right? Is it but because you're willing to take content out of your games to appease China, which is a, a, you know, no country, certainly not America has its hands clean, but China is notorious for some horrible civil rights and human rights violations happening right now. Why would you, is the money so important to you that you're willing, um, to, to, to make a deal with the devil, right? I would ask those sorts of things. Um, but he, he, come on, really? Activision's like, sure, Jaffe, we'll send him right over. You know, I'm sure Shu would, you know, I would love to have Shu and Scott Rohde on the show because I would love to ask them, if you don't know Shu, you know Shu, Shu runs all the indies. He used to run uh, uh, the North American PlayStation, long career at Sony. Uh, Scott long career as well. He's the head of PlayStation production. He's, he's what Microsoft wishes Matt booty was, uh, for PlayStation genius guy, wonderful guy. But, you know, I haven't talked to either one of them, uh, since, uh, I've really started this show for the most part, started covering games. I, I would hate to think that they have written me off and not, not as a designer, but I mean, as, uh, as like, oh, he's an asshole. I would never go on his show, even if PR would let me. But I don't think they're like that. I mean, I can't speak to Shu as much, but I can speak to Rhodey a little bit better than Shu because I know him a little bit better. And I don't, I don't, I, I think he plays the game incredibly well, but I don't think he would deny there's a game that's being played and that 
yeah, I'd love to come and shoot the shit with you, Jaffe. He and I used to do that all the time in his office. But right now, I'm still taking a paycheck in this industry. I, I get that. I get that. Yeah, Shu's amazing. Shu's, I don't think Shu ever really liked me. Like, I think he liked me as a human. But I just don't think we, I, I, our humor is very different. It's very, very different. Um, but I like Shu. Shu's, Shu's a, 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 just a real talented guy. And I think... Honestly, if Shu ever um, was able to just turn off a little bit of his Japanese loyalty, he could, I'm not saying he doesn't make bank now, but any big company would be thrilled to pay that man to have on payroll because he just, he's incredibly knowledgeable uh, about the video games, man. Um, Biohazard says, why don't you talk to them and ask, can PR even say no to them? You know, P, they, no, PR can't say no to them. Um, but, you know, I'll give you another example. Uh, the head of Blizzard, who I like very much, Mike Ibarra, uh, he reached out to me a couple of months ago and was talking about the show. And I said, oh, dude, I'd love to have you come on the show, but PR probably won't let you. And he said, uh, oh, don't worry about it. I'll come on. I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, I'm traveling for to Europe for a couple of weeks. I'll, I'll hook you up later. And then when he got back, I wrote back and he's like, yeah, PR is like, we just did a big LA times thing and they don't want me doing any more press. Now, was that absolutely true? I'm sure there was some truth there, but it was also probably PRs like what you're doing. What? You can't go on that show. He's going to ask you if Bobby Kotick's evil. And then what are you going to do? And I don't blame him. I don't fucking blame him. These people make their living uh, in that industry and they move companies all the time. And so you don't want to, you don't want to be out there uh, talking the way I do and expect that these people are going to have lunch with you to, to give you a job one day. That's why, I mean, that's how, you know, I don't really care about getting back into video games because I am more interested in being kind, but being genuine with this audience and saying, this is what I experienced without blowing anybody's secrets or anything. That's not my job. Um, and I'll burn the bridges to do it because I don't want to go back to where the bridges lead. Somebody earlier was asking me about um, getting Alana Pierce on the show. And Alana Pierce told me, you know, point blank, the same thing I'm telling you guys, which is that she said, uh, hey, I'd love to come on. Well, she almost did come on. And then they announced God of War for Ragnarok. And uh, she was like, yeah, I'm being told that I really need to, you know, she's like, you weren't singled out specifically necessarily, but anybody who's going to put us on their podcast or whatever and ask uh, questions and, 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 and ask questions that they don't want asked, like tell us a date. They're pretty much, uh, we don't want you going on those things. So if I had Jade Raymond on, I don't, I mean, I'll, there are two things I would talk to Jade about. Uh, you know, one is I would talk to her about, uh, you know, Shannon worked with her and Shannon just speaks the world of her as a leader and as a manager. So I'd want to talk about that. And I would also want to talk about um, sort of the sexual um, idiocy she has to put up with because she happens to be a woman and an attractive woman um, in video games. Um, I would, I would absolutely want to have that conversation with her. And I don't know if she would be she probably is like, I'd like to put all that shit behind me. I really don't want to continue to be thought of in that way. And I appreciate that, but it's an interesting part of her legacy. If you ask her, would you rather remain hot, but have to deal with getting hit on at work or lose? Yeah, I would absolutely ask her that Mr. K. It's a great question. I would say, I would couch it more like you are traditionally attractive. I think you know that you have to have known that your whole life. That's not a pickup. That's not an insult. That is simply, um, that is simply, uh, you know, whatever. Doesn't mean you're, you know. And, and in that, you've also taken a lot of arrows from people because they're sexual idiots and sexually immature and don't know who they are. And you've been, a, 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 you know, a verbally assaulted for, for sure. Um, and then I would say what your, your question, I think is great. I'm very, I would totally want to know that. Would you rather keep the looks you have and have had your whole life, but you have to continually deal with getting hit on at work or in inappropriate places, or you could choose to lose your attractiveness and just be very average, 
But you don't have to deal with that. I mean, let's be fair. When men hit on women and they do it in a way that's creepy and wrong, it's not often about the fact the woman's beautiful. It's about the fact the man wants to feel some power. But I know what your question means. Though. Oh, yeah, Master Luke, I get it. She probably don't want to talk about that stuff. I get it. But that's why people don't come on the show. Why in the fuck do I why in the fuck would I want to ask Jade Raymond about um I mean if her game that she's doing with Sony it has some kind of interesting um you know philosophical angle that's worth talking about cool but I don't want to just be like oh what do you like unity or unreal I mean who cares who cares I mean some people I don't Ken Levine, I've talked to. I, I I talk to Ken numerous times a year. I like Ken a great deal, but he can't come on. Ah! Um, because PR. Uh, and he also says he's not he's you know he's not ready yet. Because you know he did tell me about his game. It sounds very cool, and he's just like I, I want to. I'm not ready to go out and start talking about it. And I know that'll come up. So Biohazard says, do you think Sean Layden has avoided the interview with you because he doesn't want the want the questions you will ask? Yes, of course. Um, I like Sean. Sean, and I did a you know. Uh, a Zoom just catch up call about seven months ago for an hour just shooting the shit. I like the guy. But yeah, he knows I'm going to ask him, look, were you uh, were you pushed out of Sony? Um, what was that about? What do you think of Jim Ryan's role? And, you know, Sean's out there still trying to make a living doing uh, what he loves and what he's great at, which is being a uh, entertainment video game executive. Um, and so he's not going to want to go badmouth anybody. Not that I would want him to badmouth, but I would just want some some truth. Um, and I get it. That's a, I, I, if I was still doing that stuff, I wouldn't either. Or I wouldn't mind because I'm like, ask me, and I'll just tell you it's none of your business. Or I don't think it's a smart thing for me to answer that. You know. So you had a crush on Shannon. Let me tell you something about Shannon. Um, so when I hired her. Because I poached her from a company called uh, Black Ops. That you hardcore PS fans probably remember these guys. They made Agile Warrior, Treasures of the Deep. Um, they made something else. Something else. They this, some kind of you know go kill Bin Laden or some such shit. Um, and uh, and so I bring her out to uh, Foster City up north bay area because i was struggling i'm not a producer um and uh she uh she was great and everything but it was <laughs> let's just say a bunch of the guys up there would keep coming to me and asking about shannon because they thought she was a very attractive lady which she is and they thought she was smart and funny which she is and so they were like hey and i'm like i think she's married or almost married or whatever um but yeah that was you know um she's you know there there are uh people who use their i was talking to fucking packer about this yesterday with male executives there are people who part of one of their quivers uh one of their arrows and their quivers is pretty privilege uh and and i don't mean you use it like you are a a, a, a cock tease or a vagina tease but I mean, it, it, it's part of your the way you carry yourself in the world. And, and I think if you're a really attractive person, you can't not know that. Like, I remember, I'll tell you a story. I was, um, I'll just tell you names at this point. Well, maybe I won't tell you names. But so I had pitched Mickey Mania with Mike Guillaume to Disney. And we got the game, obviously. Made it uh, 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 Traveler's Tales. Um, the executive was a guy I don't like. I don't like him. I'm just going to tell you his name is, he was also the co-director on the motion picture. I just don't, I never trusted him. He seemed really kind of political and slimy. And I think he also stole a mechanic from us from Mickey Mania and put it in the Lion King. And everybody's like, oh, it's the Lion King. I'm like, motherfuckers, that was from Mickey Mania. Um, and he, uh, I'm standing outside one afternoon talking to a female executive. Um, very, uh, uh, Season, real smart, great person. And she says to me, "We're talking about this guy, about Patrick." And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it was like he was bringing Sony a game, or it was. It was after Mickey Mania." Um, but I says, "I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't know if I want to work with this guy." And she says to me, "She says, yeah, 
but he's really hot. And I'm like, oh God. And, and but again, you 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 play with the deck you got dealt, baby, and, and he's a good looking dude. He's a good looking dude. It's foolish to act like being attractive is not an advantage. I uh, uh, Lana Pierce, I'm sure she's smart and she clearly hustles and works a lot, but to act like being attractive isn't somewhat a factor is nuts. Who who acts like that? I, I don't think anybody, I don't think Alana Pierce would tell you that uh that she hasn't benefited from being an attractive woman. Sure, she has. Um, and, and there's nothing to be ashamed of about that. I mean, I, I've, I've benefited from being charismatic. I've benefited from being smart. I'm not saying she hasn't as well. I'm saying that you, you know, to, to say that being attractive is somehow lesser than being charismatic or smart or funny or whatever. Um, that's ridiculous. There, there are all things that you, you really had nothing to do with for the most part. I mean, let's be fair. When men hit on women and they do it in a way that's creepy and wrong, it's not often about the fact the woman's beautiful. It's about the fact the man wants to feel some power. How the hell do you approach creepy? You're going to have to define it. Okay, I'll give you a great example. And I, I, I was sort of on the fence about it when she tweeted about this. Um, uh, this was uh, Andrea Renee, as Greg Miller will tell you, the busiest lady in the business or whatever he calls her. But she's she's got her own. She's got... Uh, uh, what is her 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 podcast called? She's got a pretty good podcast. She does a lot of hosting, whatever. You know, Andrea. Um, and I think this was Andrea. She said she was at a bar for work in the middle of the afternoon, eating lunch and doing work with her laptop. And she has a ring on. Um, and some guy clearly had approached her and she was like, I'm giving off no signals. I'm at the hotel bar. I've got my laptop out. Um, I've got my wedding ring clearly on. It's not like it was in her purse. Um, and it's not like we're at singles night and it's Tuesday and it's eight 30 and the music is going and everybody's picking each other up. This is a hotel bar, um, for, you know, that a lot of professionals stay at. Now, does that mean that the guy was creepy for even seeing if she was interested? No, of course not. But if, if you're a guy and you can't read those signs, of going, she's she's not here. I mean, again, why would you not just be in your room? I get it. I get it. I don't think it's like you know the fucking you know super offensive. But I I I think if 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 you are a guy and you're incapable of being able to look at that situation and not understand she's not looking for anything with you because the only thing you're approaching her for because the only thing you know about her is that you find her physically attractive. Um. And so if she was looking for that, she would be expressing that, but she wasn't. If the only reason you're approaching someone, like if you see a really pretty woman at a bar, okay, uh, or not even a bar, at a bookstore, so there's no real indication if she wants to be introduced to anybody new or if she's just shopping, trying to get the fuck out of there. If you see a really attractive woman at a bookstore, um, the idea of... The, o the only thing you know about her is that she's attractive, which means the only thing you really want is to fuck her, which is totally fine. But then you just need to be honest about it when you approach her. Otherwise, why would you approach her? Like if she's picking up a book and you're like, oh my God, I have never seen anybody read that book before. I want to talk to her about that. Okay, sure. That, you know, that could be broached in a very uh, non-creepy way. But if the only reason you're you're doing it is is for sex, then you know, totally fine. But just kind of be open about it. It doesn't matter why is she at the bar. She's not at the bar on a Tuesday night. She's at the bar, which is a not pickup bar. It is a bar in the hotel. Right. It doesn't matter why, but but if you're trying to read signals, um, she's at a, a bar like you know to work. And they're serving lunch and she's eating lunch at the bar, even if she was not. But how hard is this?